The new train cards adds a new feature, minecart attachments. But what are they? To put it simply, attachments are objects that move along with the minecart. They can be items, like this block, or 3D models from resource packs. Minecraft entities, like mobs, can also be used as attachments. You are not limited to just one attachment, you can have multiple attachments per minecart. The minecart itself is also an attachment, and so are seats and many more things to come. I made this little test track to show off how to use these attachments. First of all, get an instance of the attachment editor using slash train attachments. As can be seen you still need to select a minecart to edit. This can be done by placing down a new minecart. The editor is controlled using movement controls. You can enter a menu using spacebar and go back using shift. The first menu changes the appearance of the attachment. The next menu changes the physical properties of the minecart. This menu changes the position. The last menu is for general actions like adding and removing attachments. To edit an existing minecart, you can sneak and slap, enter the minecart, or go at a distance and look at it, and then use slash train edit. Let's start with the appearance menu. By switching this menu, you can change what entity is displayed for entity attachments. By changing the attachment type to item, you can change what kind of item is displayed instead. These can be blocks or tools or anything else that is an item. After selecting an item, you can change between different variants of that item. For example, different colors wool. For tools and swords, you can change between different durability values and so on. For tools and weapons, something interesting happens. You can use a resource pack to attach different models to different durability values of that item. I have loaded a custom resource pack which changes the models for the golden pickaxe. Here is a train, some parts of a train, and some roller coaster cards. A download link is provided in the description. Next, let's go over the position menu. Use W and S to go up and down, and A and D to change the value of each slider. Here you can see the attachment is moved up and down using the position Y slider. The attachment is displayed on an invisible armor stand. The top slider changes which slot is equipped. It depends on the model which slots work. The rotation of the attachment is controlled using the yaw pitch roll sliders. The rotation and position will all be relative to the rotation and position of the minecart itself. It already looks nearly done, but if you look at the movement you can see it looks a little bit bad. This is because the physical of the minecart has not been updated. It still behaves like a standard minecart would. Back in the editor, you can use the physical menu to change the length and wheel distance of the minecart. The length is important for the distance between the minecarts, and the wheel distance changes how smoothly it rotates in the curves. Let's have another go and see how it looks like now. You can see it now rotates smoothly, and the pitching looks much better. Now what is remaining is to set up the passengers. Let's enter it and see how it looks. The default position doesn't look very good, but you can change it by changing the position of the seat attachment. Have a third person view to see how it looks, and adjust it until you are satisfied. I'm changing the collision mode of the minecart, so that mobs will automatically enter it. Now you can see from third person view how it looks like when a zombie is inside. If you pay close attention you will notice that the legs of the zombie are free moving. In the appearance menu of the seat you can change it to lock this rotation. Now the zombie will always be facing forwards, without restricting the movement of the head. You probably want to have all these four seats working. To do so you need to add three more seat attachments. This can be done by repeatedly adding new attachments in a general menu. Then change the attachment to seat and lock the rotation for each. Let three more zombies enter so you can actually see where the seats are positioned. They are still all positioned in the same position. 
we will need to adjust the position of each seat individually. As you can imagine, this is going to take a while, so I will skip through this real quickly. With everything set up, let's have another go and see how it looks like. The four seats stay spaced equally and rotate along with the minecart. The same way we just added a new seat, we can also add new objects. Let's pick another resource pack model from the golden pickaxe. Just like with seats, you can reposition this attachment. You can keep adding new attachments, or attachments to attachments, and they will all move relative to each other. This is why the attachment editor has a tree view like design. To remove an attachment, use the general menu of that attachment. We have put a lot of effort into this minecart, let's save it so we can quickly spawn it again. Use slash train save and then the name to save it as. The forward moving orientation is preserved. We can then put it onto a spawn sign and have it spawned instantly. The spawn minecart is an exact copy of the other one. All the attachment and settings are the same. Multiple minecarts can be spawned at once by putting a number in front or by putting multiple names on the sign. Another new feature introduced in this version of train cards is banking. Banking makes a train rotate inwards in curves and makes it look more realistic. Use slash train banking followed by the strength of the banking effect and the smoothness of the banking effect. The strength changes how far inwards it rolls and the smoothness changes how quickly it recovers from this banking effect. By increasing the strength, we can observe a more powerful effect. You can tweak these values until you are satisfied with how it looks. Higher smoothness values are more suitable for longer curves. This may require different banking values for different areas of track. This can be done using property signs, using a similar notation. Finally, here's a little trick. If you have an item that you cannot set using the editor, you can give yourself this item. Then, while having the editor open in the item selection menu, simply drop the item from your inventory. This will set this item for the attachment. This can be very useful if you have an item that has a predicate that is not supported by train cards. And that concludes this video. If you need additional help, I'm always available on the Spigot forums.